Location, location, location. Those are the three guidelines in real estate that are followed and oftentimes quoted as being the most important guidelines when buying or selling real estate. Location is also extremely important in the planting, the moving, transplanting of plants from one location to another or when deciding where certain plants or crops should be grown. Well, in this module, we'll be talking about the importance of location for plants. We'll be talking about methods used for planting and uh, giving you some guidance about how this might affect you in your future decisions in horticulture. In nature, plants are located where they survive. The best locations for plants are where they do the best, they survive the best. Well, this is a, a method of selection that's done by plants all at random. So when forest trees, the, the seeds fall to the floor, they survive or they don't survive. They do well if it's in a good location. They survive and reproduce in that location. In horticulture, we select where plants will be located. Unlike animals that have feet and legs and we can move from location to location, we can decide where we'll live and we can move with our own two legs. Plants can't do that. And when we plant something and it survives in a location, we want to make sure that that location is the best spot for growing those plants or we, might, we, we will waste time uh, energy and money when we find a new location and have to start over. So locations are extremely important when selecting where to grow things. For instance, if I'm selecting a place for papaya, I don't want a place where water will accumulate, where the soils are heavy, where the rains during the rainy period are going to flood the soils because papaya will not survive there. It might survive for a short time, but soon it'll become diseased. It will stop its production. It will yellow and die. But on the other hand, coffee likes these locations. It likes wetter soils. It survives heavier soils. And so, where the locations are for coffee production oftentimes are not good locations for papaya production unless we modify those locations in some way. The uh, slope of uh, our farm here is such that when, when we have rainfall the water comes down from this direction and then moves across our property to a, uh, an area over there where it drains away. Well, this area through here is much, has much more water in it than this area, but the area up in this direction is drier because it's a higher elevation. So the water moves this way down the property. You'll see this papaya is, has a problem because it's not growing all that well because the soil is just a little too moist for it. It's surviving, but barely surviving. The leaves are small, there's not a lot of new growth, there's no flower production at all from this papaya on it, but look at the coffee next to it. The coffee's doing very well in this soil, right in the same soil where the papaya. So the papaya, it tells you something about papaya. Papaya should not be planted on soils in a location on property where there's a lot of water drainage or a water, lot of water accumulation, or it can have problems that we'll see in just a minute. So this papaya, is further downstream or downslope from the papaya in the center of the property. And notice the water accumulation and what has happened here. 
Uh, I was going to take you, just yesterday, this papaya was standing upright, but it was being supported by the stake from the workers because they wanted to harvest the last papaya from it before it died. It didn't make it. The water was just so wet, the soil was just so wet here, it rotted the trunk, rotted the roots, and finally killed the papaya. But if you look close to it, this citrus and this coffee are doing just fine in this location. So it tells you again, the difference in location, location, location when planting fruit trees, very important. This papaya is the first in line. It's the one that's highest up, uphill from the source of water on the property. And you can see it's doing the best, it's growing the best, but there's still too much water present here because of the drainage coming in this direction. If we look at it, it's starting to lean. It will fall over soon. If I push on it slightly, you can see already that the roots are giving way. It's just too wet of a location for uh, this papaya to survive much longer. It will collapse here probably in the next week. As soon as there's a strong wind, it will be down. We can say the same thing about vegetables, fruit trees, ornamental shade trees, and uh, plants where we, we want them to survive and we want, to, want them for their beauty, aesthetics, or we want them for profit. So when selecting a location, uh, when we're looking for a location for vegetables, for instance, I oftentimes tell people to look at more than one location. Because in some times of the year, it'll be a good location. Other times of the year, it might not. For vegetables, for instance, uh, during the rainy season, it might be a good location, but during the dry season, unless we apply irrigation, it will not. Some plants prefer to be under some shade. Some prefer to be in full sunlight. We don't know that until it's by trial or error or unless we've seen that plant or we've read something about that plant to give us some information about its best location. So when we're looking at plants, location is everything when, uh, when we're thinking about planting a new one. Some of the considerations that we need to make when we're choosing a plant is that plant or should that plant be in full sun or partial shade? For instance, fruits, most fruit trees and vegetables prefer full sun. But plants like orchids, some of the shade loving plants don't like full sun. They won't do as well. So we find what we call microclimates. These are climates that are different within our landscape that we can use to plant different things. So for instance on vegetables, how do we know if a vegetable wants full sun or not? Well, the first question we ask, does it produce flowers and fruit? If it produces flowers, most likely the plant will want full sun. Not true of some, but generally speaking, plants that produce flowers like to be in full sun. Plants that don't produce flowers, but we appreciate for their foliage, for their leaves and stems, typically want to be in partial shade or shade. So the type of plant parts that are being produced by the plant, by the type of plant parts that we're going to consume are important considerations when determining the location. We can create some areas for the plants to use by, for instance, building structures. Sometimes those structures can be shade structures. Sometimes locating certain plants on the east side of a building or the west side of a building in full sun at certain times of the day are better for some plants than for others. Another consideration is wind. If a plant is in a windy location and it's producing fruits and uh, flowers and fruits, uh, windy locations might not be the best location. But generally speaking, when we're look, talking about vegetables, 
we want most of our vegetables that produce flowers and fruit to be in full sun and we want them to be not in windy locations that could damage the leaves and fruit.